Counting in the Garden by Kim Parker. One cat purring in the garden. If you look closely, there's a cat in behind the flowers. So you have to look on each page to find the animals. Two turtles meeting in the leaves. Three dogs frolicking in the posies. One, two, three. Four bunnies finding love in the shade. So can you find the bunnies? They're hiding in there. Five dragonflies darting between the daisies. One, two, three, four, five. Six ladybugs tiptoeing along a stem. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven birds nesting among the blossoms. So can you try to count the birds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight bumblebees buzzing in the blooms. Try to find eight bumblebees. Nine inchworms inching towards the petals. So here's the inchworms. They're hiding. They look like leaves. They look like parts of the petals. And there's nine of them. And ten butterflies flitting among the flowers. Counting in the garden from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so today we're going to make a pinwheel. It sort of looks like a flower. You can put it in a flower pot for a decoration, or you can put it out in your garden. You might be able to find some paper that has a waxy finish that you could put out in your garden, or you can just use it to play with when you're outside. So the first thing you need to make a pinwheel is you need a square piece of paper. And you could use a large 12 by 12 piece of scrapbooking paper to start with, or you can use just an eight and a half by 11 piece of construction. So I'll show you how to get your square from this. So the first thing you do is you fold your corner up and you match it up with your edge. You make a nice even fold. And then if you fold your top down right along the edge of your paper, So it will look like this after you've done all your folds. You fold this in, you fold this down, and then you cut this piece off that you've folded. So this is an easy way to make a square piece of paper without a ruler. All right, so there's your square. So now you've folded it once, triangle, open it up, and fold it the other way make a triangle. So you need to match up your points on your corners. Do a nice even fold. So 
So now you have your square and you fold it in two directions diagonally from corner to corner. <clears throat> then you need to take your scissors and you're going to cut in on the lines, but you don't want to cut all the way to the center. You need to leave about a finger width or a thumb width of space from your center point. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut towards the center. So see how I left, there's my center and I left it about that far in. So you need to do that on all four of your lines that you folded. have your square and it's going to be cut on all four lines, not quite into the center. Now if you're interested in decorating your paper you can do that too. So you can take your markers or your paint or your sparkles or your whatever you have and you can decorate your paper. <clears throat> so I'm going to use a uh, hole puncher. If you don't have a hole puncher, you can try to use a pencil to poke a nice hole in the corner. So you're going to start with your first corner. <clears throat> and so there should never be two holes on the same triangle piece, and there should never be two holes beside each other. So work your way around your paper. We'll start there. So your next hole is going to be on the next triangle. So we've got one here, we do not have one here, and then we put your next one here. So turn your paper on this one, we have one here, so we skip this one, and we'll do the next one. And then the same on the next one. So you've now got your four holes. And in the center, if you want to use your paper hole punch, you can. Um, if you can't get it in there, you can maybe use a pencil and poke it in. You do need to have the hole be large enough that your pinwheel is going to spin. So you can try to use your hole puncher without bending your project too much. Do all your decorating before we do the next step. You should have all your decorating done. And I'm using what are called brass fasteners. So they're just these small pins, but they have a little fold out on the back. So you can fold them out. And the box here just says brass fasteners. So I'm going to take each of my corners of my pinwheel and I'm going to line up each of these holes with the hole that I have in the center. So I'm going to have to use your fingers to the best of your ability if you need a parent to help you fold those in. So at this point, I just folded all four holes over top of my center hole. You need to have them lined up nicely so you can fit your fastener in. So I'm going to push my fastener through my center. This is where I'm at so far. So if you hold on to the back of your fastener, then you can see your pinwheel starting to take shape. Now, for me to get my pinwheel to spin, you have to make sure that it's not too tight on your stick. And so the way that I did that is I used a small craft bead. You can use a bead from bracelet making or ne necklace making stuff, or whatever kind of craft bead you have, and slide it onto the back. So I'm going to put my bead on the back like that, if you can see the picture. 
And then at the very end, I used a straw. You can use a craft stick. On this one, I use the dowel. Um, there's different suggestions. You can use just a tall um, popsicle stick or craft stick. <clears throat> and I just wrapped the very end of my fastener around there. And then I used some tape to attach it to the fastener. You can fold your fastener down over top of there and then you can tape it. And once you've got it attached, you need to work it around in circles a little bit to loosen up your center. So on this one, I've already done that. I've spent some time making sure that it's nice and loose. So when you put it out in your garden, you should be able to see should be able to see the wind catch your pinwheel or you can just run around and play with it and blow on it.